The worst movement mistake you can make in Warzone is to be too predictable. Surprise, mother... <laughs> So I'm going to explain the three steps you need to do to confuse your opponents and make sure to stick around until the end because I'm going to show you how to do the most broken mechanic in the game on controller. Okay, so to explain the first step, let's look at one of the most basic gunfights you'll find yourself in. The corner challenge. So if I think someone is on the other side of this building, sure, I could wide swing the corner like a madman, but there are some things that I don't know. Is my opponent standing up? Is he laying prone? Does he have a fire shotgun? Or maybe he's with his friendship squad and I'm gonna be dead before I hit the ground. All of these questions and unknown factors lower the chances that I'll win the gunfight. Good players play for information and here are some ways to do that. The first is the slide stop. Sliding in this game is kind of dead because there's a huge time penalty where you can't shoot your gun, but what a lot of people don't know is that you can shorten your slide and use it to get information. If you time the slide right, you'll only be visible for a short period of time, which is great for peeking a corner. To do this, you want to initiate a slide, and right when you're about to reach the corner, you look in the direction you want to turn and pull your left analog stick back in the direction you came from. If you consider this a 90 degree turn, I've found that it helps a lot to look a little bit past 90 degrees to get a hard stop. I think this movement can be especially useful with half walls because your enemies won't see you until you pop up, or they might not see you at all. Now you still get the same penalty where you can't shoot your gun, so I wouldn't use this to take a gunfight, but it is a great way to throw off your enemies. But if you don't have space for a slide, another thing you can do is jiggle peek the corner. You basically strafe back and forth quickly to get information. You will still get a little bit of peeker's advantage, but because strafe is so slow in this game, it's not much, so you don't want to peek too far. I like to rotate my left analog stick in a circle because it feels a little bit faster. I also play with auto attack sprint on, so a secret trick to temporarily disable it is to jump once and then hold the button. And now my gun will never go up into attack sprint no matter how much I move, at least until I release the button. Now there's two important things to know about peeking corners. The first is that your distance from the wall matters. If me and my opponent are playing up close to the wall, my opponent will always see me before I see him if he's holding the angle. However, if I move further back from the wall, I can actually you see the enemy and he can't see me at all because of our distances from the wall. Also, you look different on your opponent's screen if you peek to the right side versus the left because the operators hold their gun in their right hand. If I peek far enough to the right to shoot my opponent, this is what I look like to him. And if I do it to the left, here's what it looks like. The difference here might seem kind of small, but these little details matter in a game like Call of Duty when the time to kill is so low. And it's kind of fun knowing this stuff. What a nerd! Okay, the next movement to discuss for getting information is snaking. Most people are familiar with doing this behind half walls because it makes you a very small target on your opponent's screen, but it can also be overpowered in corners. To do it, you're gonna hold prone, and right before you hit the ground, you wanna sprint forward. And if you rotate your left analog stick in a circle, you can peek the corner. It takes some practice, but once you get the rhythm and the timing down for when to sprint forward, and then when to go prone, you're gonna be a menace on the map. And the final movement that I wanna cover for getting information is the doorway hop. We all know that players love to hold doors because it's a natural choke point that's really easy to defend. But if you jump back and forth, you're able to see your enemy and he will have a very hard time hitting you. And what's great is that you can also shoot your gun while you're in the air to hopefully deal a little bit of damage. This movement is extremely simple, but it's one that I don't see people use very often. And now that we've covered four ways to get information, the next step in the gunfight is to play aggressive, right? Well, not always. But to learn, you still have. I mean, sure, if I think my enemy is a casual player from the information that I have, an aggressive challenge will work almost every time. However, it doesn't always work against good players because they're expecting these types of plays and the movement in this game is pretty slow. Which is why for step two, you need to time your challenge. Great players have great timing. They anticipate what their opponents are going to do and they use movement to take as little damage as possible while still hitting most of their shots. Wow. If we look at the NBA, the best players use pump fakes all the time to trick their opponents opponents and open up the defense. And you can do the same thing in Call of Duty. If we go back to the corner example, now that you have information that only one person is there, you can start to throw in shoulder fakes at random intervals. You're not peeking for information because remember, your opponent will see you before you see them, but you're just trying to get into their head and make them wonder when you're going to challenge. And when you get really good at knowing your character model, you can literally just show pixels of your body that will be nearly impossible to hit. Some other ways you can fake out your opponent are you can open and close doors if you're fighting at a building.
building, or you can shoot your gun to make it seem like you're getting third party. You can also throw in pauses to change the tempo of the gunfight to make your opponent wonder what you're doing. I know these last few things aren't really movements that you need to learn, but the point with all these things is you want to be unpredictable and rattle your opponent's concentration. The better the player is, the better your timing needs to be to consistently win gunfights. The skill gap in this game is really low, so you can't always rely on gun skill. But if you can catch someone in a movement penalty, or even just dropping their ADS for a split second, you'll have a major advantage in the gunfight when you challenge. And speaking of that, the final step that good players use to win gunfights is they use broken mechanics for the challenge. Because whether you like it or not, these so-called exploits are part of every FPS game and the best players are going to use them to get an advantage. So if you want to win more gunfights, you're going to have to use them too. I'm sure most of you know that Peeker's advantage is huge in Call of Duty because the time to kill is low compared to other FPS games. If I aggressively jump around the corner, it will take roughly the sum of my ping and my opponent's ping for this information to get to his screen. And when you factor in human reaction time, these milliseconds can be a huge benefit when playing aggressively. This is why good players use the jump shot to challenge when coming around corners. They get Peeker's advantage and they also raise their character's hitbox, which can throw off the enemy's aim. The closer you are to your opponent the better because you can oftentimes jump completely past them. In a lot of cases you don't have to peek for information because you can just listen for footsteps and then time your jump. Now there are two variations to the jump shot that I use. The first is a double hop. You basically jump in one direction and quickly hop back in the other while hip firing the enemy. The developers remove bunny hopping from this game but if you hip fire and don't ADS you can still strafe pretty far to throw off most people's aim. And the other jump shot uses a little bit of misdirection. You sprint one way and quickly jump back the other way. I like to use this movement if I get caught out in the open and there isn't an easy cover to get behind. It's kind of like a last resort movement. Now the jump shot is pretty versatile and I use it in a lot of scenarios, but it has become the meta, which means a lot of people now expect it and are able to defend against it. So a different way to challenge a gunfight is the ledge dive. This movement looks pretty crazy from your opponent's POV and will definitely catch them by surprise. To do it, you have to time your dive so that your legs hit on the last part of the surface. This resets the gun penalty you get from diving and allows you to start shooting your gun in the air. Now you can't do this everywhere on the map because you need somewhere with a ledge, but this movement is definitely handy to have in case of an emergency. Now before we get to the most broken movement in the game, I do want to quickly bring up two other mechanics that you need to know. The first is that you can reset your tack sprint by pulling out your tactical equipment. This will help you get around the map faster faster and get into more gunfights for higher kill gains. I learned this and quite a few other things from watching B-Boy Broccoli's YouTube video on mouse and keyboard movement in Warzone 2. I think it's one of the best videos out there, so you should definitely check it out even if you play on controller. And the other movement that I use is I like to duck my head and spin when I'm getting lasered and I'm about to die. It'll make your character a little harder to hit, and by lowering your head, it'll be less exposed for high damage shots. Boom! Headshot! Boom! Headshot! Boom! Headshot! Okay, so finally it's time to get to the most broken mechanic of all, the instant drop shot. Now drop shots aren't anything new in Call of Duty, however, if you compare the instant one to the normal one, the difference is pretty significant. And once you start adding in jumps and strafes, your opponent is going to be shooting octagons and calling you a cheater. This movement is great for straight up 1v1s when there's no cover around, but it also works really well to challenge corners and get information because you can easily get back into cover. So up until recently, this was only able to be done on mouse and keyboard because they have an extra setting that controller players don't have where they can prone by pressing one button. But fortunately, there are two great ways to use keyboard buttons with a controller. And don't worry, this is completely fair and you won't get banned because Call of Duty literally says right here that during gameplay, all inputs unrelated to aim can be used from any device. Also, I want to shout out Hexsmith on YouTube. He has an awesome channel and his video showing one way to do it helped me discover a different method, which is the one I'm using. Okay, so the first way is for players using Steam. You launch the program, right click on the game, select controller layout, then select edit layout, pick the controller button you want to change, click keyboard, and then you want to pick the button that's assigned to prone in the game. And now when you press this button on your controller, it's registering the keyboard button instead of the controller button. But if you don't want to change up your controller layout or you don't want to use Steam, the second method is to get a foot pedal. And once you have it, you simply use the software that comes with the pedal to assign a keyboard input to one of the foot switches. And now that you have the prone button assigned, you simply tack sprint forward and as soon as you release your left analog stick, you press the prone button. The timing is a bit hard to get right, so I highly recommend having a friend spectate you. 
you. And once you get consistent with it, you can start to add in jumps and strafes for some extra movement. And you can even snake forward with it, which is completely broken. Now I'll show my controller overlay for this in a second, but I do wanna say that I'm sure some people will be tempted to use other programs to bind keyboard inputs to a controller on PC, but I highly recommend using Steam because other programs create a virtual emulation of your controller. So you can get really weird things like double inputs. And many of these programs are pretty sketchy and can be used for legitimate cheating. So be careful. Okay, so here's that snaking movement. The timing's pretty weird, but basically you have to sprint forward and hit prone at the right time. Now, if all of this is too much of a hassle, using a normal drop shot and adding in jumps and strafes also works really well to confuse your opponents. And if you wanna watch me live, you can catch me over on Twitch, or if you're looking for a full guide to improve your aim in Warzone, you can check out this video right here.